Welcome back, it's your favorite lieutenant, and today we're gonna be talking about how to get rich in the military, three ways that you and your family can increase your wealth. And if you're interested in becoming a military millionaire, stay tuned. Today we're gonna to discuss three ways that myself and many other military service members have used to become financially wealthy while still active duty. And those three things that we're gonna to discuss today are real estate, the thrift savings plan, as well as your credit and debt management plans. A quick disclaimer, I'm a lieutenant in the United States Army and so I wanna make it clear that I am not speaking as a representative of the Department of Defense or the United States Army or the military. I'm speaking from a personal perspective as well as my personal research that I've done on the topic. I'm also not a financial advisor or financial professional. I've simply used these tools that I'm going to describe here shortly um, to become financially successful. And I hope to spread a little bit more awareness of the programs that are available to service members and their families. So let's get into it. Number one, real estate. This topic is near and dear to my heart. I recently purchased a home following my PCS to Fort Carson, Colorado, and I have personally used the programs that I'm about to outline. What's important to know about real estate in the military is military service members are afforded the VA loan or the Veterans Affairs loan. I recently did a comparison of FHA loans and VA loans. What I found in that comparison is that the VA loan is unmatched, and many will tell you this. As a military service member, the opportunity to use the benefits that are outlined in the VA loan are unparalleled in any other civilian loan sector. So a few of the benefits of the Veterans Affairs loan is that it allows you to finance a house at 0% down. You heard that right. If you're a first time homeowner, you may not understand the significance of this. The VA loan helps alleviate the pressure to save for years and years and years until you can buy a home for you and your family. The VA loan allows you to finance a home at 0% down. It also can afford you incredibly lower rates. For example, when I purchased my home, the going rate was around 7% of an interest rate. I was able to get with a first time homeowner's loan a 5.1% interest rate. The VA loan also extends lower closing costs on average than conventional loans and it also allows you to have your home appraised. To my delight when my home was appraised, it was appraised higher than, than what the purchasing price was. So the VA loan allows you to have a little bit more awareness as well with the home that you're buying. House hacking becomes incredibly attainable using the VA loan. Financing your home as a primary residence allows you to have a lower interest rate and have subsequently a lower monthly payment on your home. So it makes it more affordable in long and short term for you to do. And house hacking is when someone lives in that home for the year required for it to be a, res a primary residence, and then they move homes in order to allow them to rent out that property. House hacking can be incredibly effective for military members, especially since we PCS so often. And you can use your new property to your advantage and generate some passive income for yourself. There's a few ways that you can generate passive income using your real estate properties that I recommend. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, so take this with a grain of salt. But the way that I've seen this best work is to purchase a multifamily home. Personally, I have not done this method, but I have seen it work wonders for military members. What you simply do is purchase a multifamily home. While you're living in one of the complexes of the home that you've recently purchased through the VA, you are renting out the other side of the home. You can pay for a significant amount of your mortgage using the passive income generated by renting it out. The method that I personally went with is to purchase a single family home if you're living as a primary resident of the home, you can also rent out rooms that you have with spaces like Airbnb, Facebook Marketplace, as well as Craigslist. And of course, using application processes to vet your renters, you can ensure that you can still generate passive income while only owning a single family home and being able to rent out that home once you've surpassed the one year primary residence rule. So that's house hacking. And there's a few other nuances that we can get into if you guys 
guys would like to see that type of video, please leave your comments in the comment section. Real estate can not only be incredibly helpful for military members generating passive income, but it can also be a way for military members to generate generational wealth that they may not have had prior to joining the military. And so because of this, real estate is one of the most lucrative ways that I have seen military members switch the script and become military millionaires in one generation and be able to pass it on to their children and their children's children. So I highly recommend that if you're a military member that you look into the VA loan parameters, that you look into more processes of how to apply, who is eligible. And if you would like more details on this in a more detailed video, please let me know in the comments. The second way that military members and their families can get rich in the military is to understand and contribute to their thrift savings plan. So what is a thrift savings plan? A thrift savings plan is similar to a 401k in the civilian sector. It's when an employer offers a retirement account for their members and employees to contribute to. Being in the military allows you an opportunity to invest in your retirement savings in an incredibly lucrative way. If you enlisted or joined the military after January 1st of 2018, you were entered into the blended retirement system. And so I'm really going to be talking about that. If you joined during that period of time, you were automatically enrolled in the retirement savings plan and your automatic allotment is set to 3%. And the benefits of this is that it gets you saving regardless of whether or not you understood the importance of a retirement savings plan. However, it is incredibly important that you up the amount that you are contributing to the thrift savings plan simply because this particular retirement savings plan is the best in the country and it is important to contribute as much as you possibly can to your retirement savings plan. I know that when I was first enlisting in 2017 and I got my first financial advisor brief, I had no idea the importance of a retirement plan. Why would I need to start saving for retirement when I'm 17 years old? And it's incredibly important to know that because of the compounding interest that is compiled onto your savings that you contribute, it can be the difference between you being a millionaire by the time you are of retirement age and just barely making it. So it's incredibly important to start contributing to your retirement savings plan as early as possible. And so that's why I say you should attempt to up the amount of contributions that you make to your thrift savings plan and eventually be able to max it out once you're able to cure other means of passive income. Another great thing about the thrift savings plan is that it actually will match up to 5% of a contributions made by military service members. You have to be in the service for more than two years for them to match the contributions. However, your first few years, they will match 1% of your contributions. And once you've served more than two years, you will then receive the 5% contribution match. This is incredibly important because it's free money. <laughs> Whether or not you did the traditional or Roth option, you're going to be able to see the benefits of these contributions. So getting into a little bit of the weeds and an important note that I want to make about the contributions is that most of the time, I'm not a financial advisor, but most financial advisors would recommend that you open a Roth TSP account. This is simply because the traditional account will tax you at a later date once you are about to withdraw the funds. The issue that comes with this is that normally we want to be making incrementally more money as we progress through life. So the negative impact potentially there is that you will be taxed more later in life if you wait to tax your money until you withdraw your retirement savings. However, with the Roth option, it allows you to tax your contributions currently at your current tax rate, which is likely going to be lower than your tax bracket when you're at your retirement age. We hope if you're following the points in this video, we definitely should be at a higher tax bracket towards the time when we're trying to take out our retirement savings. So we normally want to use the Roth TSP account. However, if you do open a Roth TSP account because the contributions are only matched through a traditional retirement savings plan, it you are technically having both accounts open at the same time in order to allow them to match the contributions because they must be able to tax 
the money at a later point in time. That is a nuance that many do not know about the TSP plan, but it is important to know nonetheless. TSP has five funds that you're able to allocate your contributions to. Well, technically six, but the sixth one doesn't count until you're retired. Five funds are G, F, C, S, and I. Without going into too many nuances, the progression of funds goes from G being the lowest risk to I being the highest risk. Funds generally place into the G fund automatically. You're gonna wanna change this fund while you're younger in life because you're able to assume a lot more risk in your retirement savings plan while you're younger in life. Of course, once you start reaching your age of maturity and you wanna lock in the savings that you've received in your retirement savings plan, you're gonna wanna migrate back to G. But while you're young in your career, you're gonna wanna jump into one of the F, C, S, or if you're feeling particularly risky in the very beginnings of your career, I. I wouldn't recommend going into international stocks. It is a lot more risky. The funds bucket that I would definitely recommend, although I'm not a financial advisor, to go to change your retirement funds into is the one of the stock funds. The fund is your sweet spot. It is the middle fund that it uses the S&P 500 to reference those stable stocks. And so you're gonna have a lot more predictability in your savings, assume a little bit of risk, but potentially reap the rewards of investing in the stock market for your retirement savings plan. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can drop down to the G government bonds fund or the US. Before you do anything, definitely speak to the financial advisors that you have on post with your Army Community Center. There's also many military financial advisors on post as well as within Military One Source that can help you navigate the space a little bit more. Uh, as well as I can go into much further detail about the thrift savings plan and other retirement options for military service members. The third thing that we're gonna talk about is credit and debt. We're lumping these two together, even though they're very large components on their own, simply because I think both are vital and important to the understanding of financial readiness and wealth management in the military. A common misconception among many service members is that credit is not important to them simply because they have a well-paying paycheck that is steady and reliable. And this misconception can be dangerous. Credit is incredibly important for military service members because of the topics that we talked about earlier, like buying a house, buying a car, and other very important financial aspects of someone's life. Your credit score can be incredibly important, and this is another reason why we are talking about debt management, because your debt to income ratio is heavily involved in your credit score, and so we're gonna hit a little bit about how you can reduce your debt in the military using the programs and services available to military service members. Just to go back to the credit side of the house, there's some incredibly advantageous programs out there that are catered towards military service members building up their credit. A large part of building your credit is credit history, and for this reason, it's incredibly important that service members have an open credit card that's able to increase their credit score. Because of the length of history being an incredibly important factor of your credit, you very rarely want to close your credit card as it's providing the credit bureau your credit history. And so if you don't already have a credit card open, it's incredibly important to open one. There's multiple financial institutions that are military friendly. I would steer clear of predatory financial institutions and definitely speak to your family and financial advisors prior to opening up any credit cards. There are an incredible amount of financial institutions who offer fantastic military opportunities with points and cashback rewards for having credit cards open. It's important to not have an immense amount of credit card debt, but to have a credit card open and be using it for the purposes of building your credit. What we never want military members to do is to uh, use a credit card to purchase that which they cannot afford on their own. You want to be able to comfortably pay off your credit card bill at the end of the month. Of course, you want to leave a small balance in order to show the use of credit. 
However, something that I personally do is have my credit card pay off automatic payments of less than $200 a month so that I'm able to very easily pay it off every month, but I am able to show a prolonged use of credit. You can use your credit card as you see fit, there are several credit cards and charge cards that actually waive their fees for military service members and many do not know the immense benefits that they can get. One of these such benefits is the American Express Platinum Card. I am currently a user and lover of the Amex Platinum Card. There's a whole long list of benefits including a $200 airline credit, a $200 hotel credit, as well as free lounge access to multiple airport lounges across the United States and internationally. Often provide food and free alcoholic beverages as well as other drinks. As we know, the military can get incredibly stressful and these lounges can also just provide you a little space to decompress as you're traveling. I would also highly recommend looking into the Chase Sapphire card, which provides similar traveling benefits to military service members free of charge. Both the American Express Platinum card and Chase Sapphire card waive an annual fee of over $600 in order for military service members to be able to use the benefits of the card. And so because of this, I highly recommend looking into which credit cards are able to benefit you and your family the most. Of course, if you don't travel that much, I would be surprised if you don't, if you're in the military, but if you don't travel that much, there's also an incredible amount of cashback rewards credit cards that will help you kill two birds with one stone, both receive benefits for using the card as well as help you establish a credit history to increase your credit score. So the last part of this video is going to be about the Service Members Civil Relief Act. and. If you take nothing else from this video, please take this. I have experienced a lot of soldiers in my time as a lieutenant at Carson. Junior enlisted, junior enlisted, officer, etc. have had incredible issues with debt management. And a little known fact about the Service Members Civil Relief Act is that it limits the interest rate of debt to 6% or lower. And so if you have a loan or you have a debt that is incurring a interest rate of 6% or higher, you can actually lower that using the Service Members Civil Relief Act. And that is for debt that you have occurred prior to joining the military and after you've joined the military. And so it can be an incredible asset to families and service members who have unfortunately occurred debt over the time, whether it was from PCSing, helping out family members, trying to go back to school. Definitely, if you have a debt issue that is holding you, you or family members back from achieving your financial goals, this could potentially be a fantastic way to help you reach those goals. Please note that there are an incredible amount of resources available to military service members and their family, not only online, but in person. That concludes the three ways for you and your family to get rich in the military. If I was able to help you in any way this video, please leave a comment letting me know which of those three ways you're going to use to achieve your military millionaire status. Please share with somebody that you know could benefit from this information. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.